Esk Tower, insulating a pre-1919 stone-built Scottish house. My name is Jonathan Esk Riddle, and this is my tower. It's in Midlothian. It's a former industrial house, a pump works for an old coal mine. It's got some unusual dimensions to it. The walls are especially thick, and it's quite tall, but otherwise it's a fairly normal construction, same as the neighbouring houses, same as any pre-1919 Scottish home. This winter we insulated two ro walls on uh, two rooms on the middle floor. This is the office room as it was at the start. We've removed the furniture and we're about to start re removing the walls, stripping it all the way back to the stone. The other room is the bedroom. Again, gypsum plasterboard construction on the walls, all boxed out with stud wood, making a gap between the plasterboard and the stone walls. Every property in Scotland will need good insulation to make it stay warm and energy bills stay down. It's the main proven way for households to limit the climate crisis. We found some historical documents lost behind the skirting and the walls. including this video, which unfortunately we could not watch because it's in an obsolete format. It's fun taking apart your plasterboard, and it's fun stripping out the old stuff you find beneath it. Layers of wallpaper upon wallpaper. Lath and lime plaster coatings. And this newspaper from 1992, so the last rebuild was 30 years ago. So we stripped off the plasterboard, stripping it back to the stone, but the stonework is in poor quality. It's not been maintained for at least 30 years and probably much longer. Taking apart these wooden studs is quite a task in itself, as it has a lot of long nails in it. It needs a bit of specialist tools just to do that. We found fireplaces and behind the office cupboard, we found another cupboard under the stairs. Here's me uh, taking down some of the old lath and plaster from the 1950s. We had to clean out the fireplaces and, and the old chimney. It was full of bricks and dust. There's Dan looking very pleased with himself, having taken out fireplaces upon fireplaces. Creates a lot of dust. Make sure to keep the doors well closed, or your interlinked fire alarms will go off. Then, the first thing you need to do is clean and repair the stonework. Stonework is full of holes where the mortar has crumbled away. Brush, brush that down with a stiff brush. Hoover it up with an industrial hoover from Screwfix. They're cheaper than the domestic ones. And repair the gaps between the stones with St. Allier lime mortar and sharp sand mix. And the first insulation task is to take up the floorboards around the external wall walls. We used a circular saw and a crowbar, uh, filled in the space uh, by the walls with this Gutex Thermoflex. It's a low density wood fiber, quite soft and flexible. Squeeze that into the gaps to limit the ways that heat can get into the stone. We find another newspaper under the floor that says 1957. There's a lot of deafening under the floors, and that's just the traditional way to insulate it against sound and a bit of heat. So we, we left that in place. Some of the floorboards there had woodworm in it, so they need to need to replace with modern ones. Here's the walls with the lime mortar redone, fill, filled in the gap gaps between the walls, between the stones. The first new material on the walls is Diathomite Evolution, it's an Italian product, it's made of cork, lime and diatomaceous earth. 
You plaster that onto the walls to cover every surface to create as smooth a surface as you can and quite thick. It's a low density material and it's a bit insulating in itself. We bought it from Ecological Building Systems, an Irish company with a warehouse in Carlisle. Here we've covered every bit of the external stone surface of the office. Next step is to cover the external walls in Gutex Thermo Room wood fibre boards. They're a bit stiffer than th the Thermoflex we saw earlier. Four centimetres thick we used. You can get it thicker if you like. Glue that onto the walls. There's an adhesive that you buy with it. Um, and cover the whole of one side to, to stick it onto the diatomaceous earth layer beneath it. We closed all the gaps with this blue tape, Tescon Vana, very sticky and we embedded the electrics into the wood fibre. In the office here, we've covered all the walls with Gutex wood fibre. Where there's a gap, we take a wee slice of that Gutex and fill in the gaps. We've covered the corners with L-shaped wood bead from B&Q, and we've embedded the electrics into the walls with plenty of new sockets and lights where we want them to go. We've also started the frame for the door in the cupboard under the stairs. And we're boxing in those stairs with a ply board. Then lime plaster on top of the wood fibre board. Lime Green Solo is the product, it's an English product. And like all the products we're using on the external walls, you can't buy it in B&Q, you need to go to a specialist supplier. Like all the other layers, it's breathable and lets air and moisture pass through. It's very hard to get lime mortar, lime plaster flat. Uh, we used a sponge float and metal polisher, but even so it's full of character. But that's okay, it fits in with the nature of the building. Here I am particularly pleased at the new light that's working. And then the final layer on the external walls is, is paint. Again, not from your local supplier. We bought Aru paint, A-U-R-O, mineral paint. Um, so it makes sure that still the walls can breathe air and moisture. We're going to leave the floorboards bare in the office. So we're filling in the gaps with wood wedges made from reclaimed floorboards. Use a bit of wood glue and shave those down with an oscillating multi-tool. Then we're putting on the wallpaper on the internal walls. High quality lining paper from your DIY shop. Um, put, put on the lining paper horizontally and then uh, create a one feature wall in each room using the fancy paper. And we're uh, hired a wood sander to sand down the floorboards. We've got a carpenter to make the boxes and the windows to make the window sills and the mantelpiece above the fireplace. And the fireplace becomes another nice wee cubby, cubby hole. We've got an artist friend to make some decorating features. And that lime plaster on the external walls, we use that on the ceilings as well, just to keep the texture consistent. Is there a door finished in the cupboard under the stairs? We put skirting board all the way around the walls and around the door frame and paint that. Added in a couple of lights at one end. In the bedroom, we've got all the electrics in. Uh, we've done all the painting and wallpapering. Hung a bookcase on a wall for shelves. And this is the finished bedroom with shelves, bed. We made a cushion for the window boxes and added curtains, a desk and painted the radiator. Finished office has desks, a monitor mount on the wall, filing cabinets, a window blind, and a mantelpiece above the fireplace.
and the Classic Writing Bureau. Here's the complete progress again, showing a characteristic deep window. So this technique is called insulation on the hard, directly onto the stone. There are other ways to insulate. To learn more, see Historic Environment Scotland's Engine Shed in Stirling, or Loco Retrofit in Glasgow. Consult a retrofit engineer. We used Lisa from Six Cylinder in Glasgow. Despite a quarter of Scottish homes being stone built, this still isn't well known methods, so don't trust large commercial companies or big chains like B&Q for most of the materials. Ecological building systems are great. PH store for some of the passive house components. Lime Green will sell stuff direct in England. I'm Jonathan S. Griddle, and thank you for watching my video about my tower.